Bonjour Monsieur Grenier and welcome everyone to my instructional video on how to carve on skis. For the introduction portion we're going to be going over the definition, the purpose and a list of seven steps to follow. So definition, uh, ski carving is a technique used for downhill skiing. The skier will put the skis on edges and allow the ski to take the skier along the natural turn. The purpose for this technique is so that the skier can reduce as much contact between the ski and the snow. This will allow the skier to go faster, have more balance and be less tired since the ski will be doing most of the work. So here's the brief list of seven steps to follow. We got the initial position, turn initiation, getting on edge, applying pressure, maintaining pressure, releasing the pressure and repeat. All right, so for this next portion of the video, we'll be going over the steps. We're going to be covering the definition, description, cautions, list of equipment, list of steps, and the results for performing this technique in detail. So definition, once again, ski carving is a technique used for downhill skiing. The goal is to get the skis on its edges and allowing the natural shape of the ski take the skier along a natural turn. These natural turns come from the arc on the ski, as you can see in this example. Here are the arcs, they lie along the edges of the ski. And these arcs actually belong to a circle of a certain radius, and each ski has a turning radius. Uh, this one, for example, has a turning radius of 15 meters. Uh, these turning radiuses can actually range from short, medium, and long turns. So a ski with a turn radius of 10 to 15 meters is considered a short turn. 15 to 20 meters is considered a medium turn, and anything over 20 meters is considered a long turn. Now you don't need to be discouraged if your ski doesn't have the turn radius that you desire, because in a ski we also have a camber, and when you apply pressure to the camber you can actually initiate the turn sooner or later, meaning you could have a shorter turn or a longer turn, and this would be like your natural turn. Okay, so for this next part, we're gonna give a little description of what happens. Uh, for starters, ski carving is a great way to get your skiing to the next level, and obviously its goal is to make it more enjoyable for the user. So here's how it happens. Your ski actually, when it's on edge, comes in less contact with the ground as opposed to being flat on the surface. Now this actually allows uh, for less friction and resistance when skiing. And this will allow the skier to reach higher speeds. Uh, you'll be less tired because you'll actually be doing, uh, the skier will be doing most of the work. Uh, such as an example in this image, he's actually not braking, he's actually going with the flow, with the turn. And uh, lastly, you'll actually be uh, more in balance on your skis. Uh, as an example, uh, if he were to lift this foot up, he'd actually still be able to balance himself on that la outside ski and complete his turn. So before actually suiting up and getting onto the mountain, it's important to talk about the necessary precautions. So ski carving is a difficult technique to master, seeing that the mountain is constantly subjected to changes to temperature and slopes. And seeing that the skier will be going at higher speeds, it is important that the skier is always aware of their surroundings. So this will include trees, icy patches, closed off areas, and most importantly, other skiers. Now, on the topic of other skiers, it, all, it is also important to respect the, the right of way of other skiers in order to prevent serious collisions. Um, next, uh, it's also important for a skier to know their own limitations. So obviously it wouldn't be wise to attempt steeper slopes if you're still trying to learn the technique. And also it could be exciting to be learning this new technique. So make sure you know how much your muscles can take most accidents tend to happen on the last run of the day where a skier thinks they could do one more, but their muscles give out. Lastly, it's also the responsibility of the skier to wear all of their necessary safety equipment. Uh, for obvious reasons, you don't want to injure yourself. And uh, on the topic of equipment, here is a list of required equipment for skiing in general. So it include a pair of carbon skis, uh, ski boots, Holes, helmet, goggles, mask, jacket, thick pair of gloves and socks to keep warm, uh, snow pants, and any additional layers that'll help you keep warm. 
All right, so for the next part of the video, we'll be going over the seven steps required for the ski carving technique. Uh, as you can see, to properly show how it's done, I put myself in my boots and my skis. So step one, we're gonna have the initial position. We're gonna keep the skis and the boots shoulder width apart. This is gonna help with keeping balance and keeping the skis parallel to each other. And in a real setting, we'll be traveling across the trail. So adjacent to the downward slope of the mountain uh, so that we can actually uh, control our speed before getting into the turn. So step two is the turn initiation. So in order to do this, you've got to shift the majority of your weight to your outside ski. Now, what does this mean? If I want to turn left, I'm going to shift all my weight onto my not all, but the majority of my weight to my right ski. And if I want to turn right, I'm going to shift the weight to my left ski. A little counterintuitive. Okay, so then, step three, we're going to be getting on edge. So it's all about getting on edge here. Basically, you're going to roll your knees and ankles inwards. Let's say I were to perform a left turn. And by doing this, you're going to be putting the skis on the natural arc, which will give you that turn. Now, you don't have to go with the natural turn of the ski because in the next step we will be applying pressure you're going to be applying a pressure with the shin onto the ski and by doing this you're going to be forcing the camber to adjust the arc so you could actually create a sharper or a larger turn depending how you like now once that is achieved you're going to hold this position until the turn is complete. Now, what does that mean? You gotta try and imagine that you're drawing a uh, letter C onto the mountain, as you see in the picture. The goal is to try and keep them as consistent as possible. But uh, yeah, so that's why you know when a turn is complete. Lastly, you're gonna release the pressure and you're gonna roll back the knees and ankles into your initial position. Once you get in, to this position, you'll be facing the other side of the mountain, which will allow you to repeat the steps in order to complete the second part of the turn. Now, as a result, you'll be skiing quicker, more efficiently, and more in control, as mentioned earlier. All right, so I am now back into my regular shoes and seating position, and we've now reached the conclusion part of the video. In the conclusion, we'll I'll briefly show the seven steps one more time and uh, it will be followed by some useful information that I put together for any beginner to carving. So here are the seven steps. You can pause the video, have a look at it if you'd like one more time. And uh, now time for the additional information part. Um, so ski carving is a difficult technique as mentioned earlier due to the changes in slopes and conditions on the mountain. It is important to be patient, don't get frustrated. Uh, you know, getting frustrated might result in injury. So stay calm. Um, also, it's, it would be a good idea to get to know if you'd like short turns or long turns uh, more right off the bat so that when it comes time to buying skis, you won't have to waste more time and money buying another pair. Let's say you're not satisfied with your purchase. Um, as a tip, it's also important that uh, you don't skid when you're performing the carving turn. Most people uh, don't actually get on enough on edge and what looks might feel like a carve is actually just the skier going side by side in a straight line and braking and this is less efficient, uh, more tiring and uh, it's not a carve at all. Um, as a tip to help with that at the start, um, maybe you could hire an instructor at the mountain. I'm sure they'd be happy to show you how it's done. And this would also help develop good habits so that you don't repeat them later on and it will be easier to correct right away. That being said, thank you for watching the video. I hope you learned something and see you in class.